<clears throat> Greetings and salutations, everybody. Welcome to installment number four in this Underworld franchise review with the 2012 entry for Underworld Awakening, which sees the return of Kate Beckinsale in the lead role of Celine uh, in an entry which is a follow-up to parts one and two rather than being a prequel or side story the way that part three was a prequel. And the synopsis for this entry is as follows. When human forces discover the existence of vampire and lichen clans, a war to eradicate both species commences. The vampire warrior Selene leads the battle against humankind. But that is not all. There is a lot more to this. But uh, before we kind of uh, get to that, let's talk about this war, which is how the bulk of our first 10 minutes is spent filling us in on, as well as another quick little flashback to kind of remind us what happened in the first two films, leaving out anything about part three since that was a prequel and we don't really need a recap of that. So we get this quick reminder of parts one and two, and then we go right into where we are with this one, this discovery of the vampires and the lichens and the eradication effort. In uh, some ways, these scenes where they're kind of showing this played almost like a news report, um, kind of remind me in some ways of, um, of what was shown in the film Daybreakers, you know, um, which I also did a video for and will link to at the end of this one. So be sure to stick around to the end for that. Um, so in this, they're kind of treating vampires and lichens like they are just these infected beings, but not really human and they are easily taken out. You know, we see them rounded up and exterminated and how Celine and Michael are kind of caught up in this war. Um, all the way up until, you know, the fit hits the Shan and Celine wakes up years later after being frozen after an altercation where she was knocked out with Michael also being missing. So we get to see this nice thing kind of unfold, them getting taken out, and then a little while later she's thawed out. She'd um, been kept in a lab on ice literally for years, and now she's set free gathers her equipment and is off to find out what had happened. And this is where the tone takes another turn, still veering a little bit further from horror, more into the sci-fi feel. It feels a little like um, like Resident Evil in a way, where there's more of this sci-fi horror or this uh, sci-fi action feel to it than some of the horror aspects. Not that that's a bad thing, as uh, it really does work out very well for this entry. But, um, you know, through her escape, she also rescues this child, a little girl by the name of Eve, who is some sort of like vampire lichen creature with a mysterious background. And she's helped um, on the run by David, who's played by a Theo James, another vampire, to where she can kind of recover by being in hiding within his coven, which is led by Thomas, played by Charles Dance, who you may know from anywhere from The Golden Child to Last Action Hero to Game of Thrones. Um, within this, we're kind of filled in with this environment the way that Celine is filled in as far as what's going on and how this coven is run these little uh, tests and therapies that they have to assist this child that was rescued and how they survive in this altered world where they're no longer in the shadows coexisting with humanity and lichens in some ways so much as they're just further in the dark hiding, just running for their lives now that humanity knows about them and is actively hunting them down. But beneath all this, back to that lab where she was kept, um, that's where the real mystery of this one is. You know, who let her out? Um, what this lab is, um, who's running it, for what reason as it pertains to this war between humans and both the vampires and the lichens. And of course, you know, like the others, we get this seed planted for another film toward the end. Not really a direct cliffhanger so much um, because this one does have a very satisfying ending to it, but just a seed kind of planted that we can have another film after this. Now this one was very refreshing in that it had a different feel than this uh, than the prequel before it did. It felt more like that first film, um, with more going on in the city rather than out in the woods or in a flashback. We still have that muted color palette uh, showing what this semi-futuristic city and post-major cleansing, as they put it, um, you know, how all that's kind of laid out, um, but it kind of grounded it a bit more. Um, now, throw on top of the, uh, the mystery building off our initial story from the first film that's kind of slowly carrying through on this one, um, we, you know, reg regarding this like company and this war, along with our return to lead character Celine and a very slim runtime in this one, is that it's only 88 minutes uh, long. We get something that feels a lot more like the first film, really fleshes things out a lot more while opening up the door for other for other avenues to explore, introduce us to some more characters. It really makes this entry a refreshing a, a refreshing one that is more than worth checking out. And speaking of checking out, thanks for checking out this latest quick little video here for the Underworld Franchise Review for Underworld Awakening from 2012, which like the others is available on paid rental. This was a very refreshing kind of update after that prequel. Like I said in the previous video, I did end up liking that prequel better this time around. 
but it did feel like a very different film that kind of stands out in this series. Maybe that's why it kind of works out that it's that third one in the middle of these five that you kind of get a break from what they were building in one and two, have that prequel, and then we have part four. Now, of course, we're also going to have part five coming up as well, which is my first time seeing it. But, um, but as I said, this is a short one and only 88 minutes, um, but don't let that fool you. With the, even with the exposition and the flashbacks at the beginning, they really use that time wisely, further building out Selene and the storyline, opening up more aspects of Coven, introducing some new characters, leaving us with a path to go down to for the next film. And um, yeah, so anyways, be sure to uh, subscribe and hit that little bell icon to get notifications for when I put up that final entry, which should be in about a week. Also check out my back catalog. I have um, a little over 260 films covered. So watch all of them, one after another. Just click that playlist and keep watching all 30 plus hours or so. Give a thumbs up to everyone and share every single video on every single social media platform you have. Even the old ones that weren't very good, like for Mannequin and Electric Dreams and all that. Anyways, that's all I have for this one. Thanks again for coming by and for sticking around to the end as it really does help out quite a bit. And I will see you in the next one.